everyone, welcome to this v uh, setup installation tutorial. Uh, today we're just going to be looking at uh, the installation and quick setup of uh, v just to get you up and running. Uh, if you are looking for a more in-depth tutorial, there will be more parts coming out to this. I think it'll be a three-part series, so I'll be looking at uh, creating custom profiles and everything. But for now, today this first tutorial is just going to be uh, how to set up v and how to install uh, profiles if you already have some set up. So for those of you within the Vancouver FIR, these are available uh, with our sector files. So talk to an instructor and mentor if you need help accessing those. But uh, yeah, so this will be a quick tutorial getting started. So quick disclaimer, uh, currently today as of the time of recording, I'm on version 4.0.0 beta 3. So uh, this may change. Keep in mind this could be different uh, depending on what versions get released uh, down the road. But for now, this is the version we're going to be using and what we're going to be looking at today. So let's start with uh, the installation. So you're going to need to go, you can basically just Google Vietas. So when you Google Vietas, this is the website. Thank you, Mr. Center. That's uh, Charlie Bravo Tango 903 checking in. Hey, sorry about that, folks. Uh, I'm controlling at the same time here. It's not too busy, so hopefully there won't be too many interruptions. But uh, just in case you know what's going on there. But anyways, uh, so this is the website that should pop up. Just scale this so that uh, fits the screen a little better. Uh, this is a website that should pop up for you guys. So basically what you're looking for is just to go to this v site. And uh, if you go download or GitHub, that either or works, um, both will take you to the GitHub page. Um, so I just click download and you can see the latest version is still beta 3. Uh, we can just download that, go to the download link, and that will open up the download page. Uh, save the exe file and uh, we will look at the installation. All right, so now that we have uh, this downloaded, you can pop up in the exe file and this is what will come up. Basically, just next. Uh, and then we can, you don't need to delete the config file if you've already got one. So I already got one, I'm just going to leave that there. On desktop shortcut or start menu shortcuts, you can leave those checked. Uh, up to you. Hit next. Basically, choose your program path. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to actually hit install, but uh, you get the idea that you should install, and that would uh, run through the installation, and we should be good to go. So once that's installed, uh, we'll open up Vietas, and we'll take a look at uh, it there. Okay, so now that we have it installed and open, you're going to be greeted with this screen. Now, I already have a profile installed, but you obviously wouldn't see any profiles here uh, on your first install. So what we're going to do is... Vancouver Center. Okay, sorry about that. So back with the Vietas profiles here. So now that we have uh, this installed, basically what you have the option to do is either create a new profile. Uh, if you had a profile, you could rename it. This would delete the profile that's already there. Uh, if you have a profile to import, you could import it through here and you could export a current profile by exporting it with this. Uh, okay, so to import a profile, we're going to click import here and this will open up a browser here and you're going to navigate to your Vietas profiles. So as you can see here, I have a bunch of Vietas profiles for your various things. Um, but this is the one that you will likely have access to if you're with the Vancouver Verifier. And if not, um, yeah, you'll have to ask your facility engineer for a Vietas profile or create your own. But uh, regardless, we're going to import this one today. So to import it, we simply just hit open. And it says you already have a profile. Would you like to override it? So this is the same profile that I have. Um, it won't ask you for this if you have it, so I'm just going to hit no pops open here. All right, so we go, first thing that we're going to go to do is check the settings. So we click settings, uh, put in your name, your VATS MC ID, and your VATS and password, along with your network rating and the server that you want to connect with. Now, these other two options here are optional. If you want to suppress the notification sound, uh, it can be helpful. Uh, I just leave these both unchecked, and if you wanted to keep uh, Vietas visible at all times, you could check this one as well. But again, I'm going to leave it unchecked today, uh, just for my own purposes. So once you've got all that in there, just save settings. And then what you're presented with is all these various airports. So at the moment, Vietas, uh, this beta allows you to connect up to four ADISs to the network. Uh, and then obviously it's got the airport codes up here. So again, this is just a really quick start. Uh, so let's say we want to connect one up for Kelowna. So what we're going to do, check the winds here at Kelowna. We can see the winds are calm. So runway 16 is our calm wind runway. And uh, it's VMC conditions up there today. So I'm going to go 16 VMC. 
you can see it automatically populates in uh, what your facility engineer has configured as the airport conditions for that particular profile. You of course can edit this, so let's just say that you wanted to change this to runway 34 is active, or you wanted to change this to the RNAV. We could always just change visual to RNAV, and boom, it now says uh, the approach is ILS or RNAV runway 16. And then we just hit the save button to save that. I'm going to go back to visual because that's what I'm going to be using today. So I list visual 16, landing departing runway 16. Um, other airports, let's just pop over to Vancouver real quick. This is a longer one. So let's just say 26 VMC. So you can see it's quite a bit longer in here, depending on how much information you want to actually put in. Okay, that being said, we'll pop back to Kelowna because there's already a Vancouver ATIS up today. We have a lovely tower controller controlling Vancouver, and he's got the ATIS. So we'll, we'll be putting up uh, one at, at uh, Kelowna. So airport conditions. Uh, that all looks good to me. What we'll then check is no TAMs. So if you had, oh, I'm getting a VCS call from Tower. Hold on. We're going to check uh, the no TAMs box now. So if you had something in here, this would be additional airport information you could type in for a particular profile. Anything that you type in here or here, of course, is saved to this particular profile. Now, one nice thing about Vietis is that we can pop open, as I just did there, clicking on airport conditions. We can open up the airport conditions definitions box. And this allows us to create definitions that we might want to have regardless of what runway is available. So right now I actually have this, which I don't want checked. So this is why you check this. So we're going to uncheck that uh, and close that. So that's good. So basically what that does is it'll put it in uh, after your current airport conditions. Or if you check this box, you can put it in before your freeform airport conditions. And these definitions are saved regardless of the profile that you're using. So if I were to open up another profile, let's just say runway 34 VMC, and we open up the airport conditions box, you can see that that is all still in there. The exact same thing is still in there. So it doesn't matter what ATIS profile you have selected. This information will always be present if you have it checked. So that could be nice depending on certain things you can use it for. Uh, I like to put it into no TAMs a lot of things. So for example, we see I have advice, controller, preferred approach on initial contact. So this would append this after airport conditions uh, and after any no TAMs that you have within that particular profile. So if I were to type, uh, I don't know, call center on 133.70, oh, it's too many threes, 133.70 when airborne and save that and then open up this. And now all of a sudden I've got or what it would say, and let's just say that I check this box as well. So what it's going to say is it's going to run through the airport conditions, it'll then run through the NOTAMs, and then it'll run through any NOTAM definitions that I have. If I select this box, it'll run through the airport conditions, and then this, and then any freeform NOTAMs. So it just changes the order, allows you to change up the order depending on what you're doing. Of course, we're not going to be doing that today. Um, I'm going to be deleting that. Uh, and actually, let me just show you this. So we got that, and then when we go to 1.6, see how it gets rid of that and if we open up no tams you can see that if i check this so let's check this again uh, and close this and we'll go back to three four and now it will still have that check so no matter which uh profile you have or yeah i guess runway profile you have selected down here the anything that's checked in these definition boxes will still carry across so it can be useful depending on which is it and we use it at vancouver for example and again sorry to keep jumping around but let's jump over to vancouver real quick to say PDC available on request in our ATIS. If we change the NOTAM, change the runway, airport conditions, anything like that, this definition will always be there. So hopefully uh, that clears things up. So once we have airport conditions, NOTAMs, everything set up how we like it, we simply just hit the connect button. So this will connect it. You can see in my controller list it's popped up the ATIS and it's filled in automatically what the weather is. So clear skies, calm winds, this is a fantastic day out at Kelowna. If I change this, this would cycle the ATISs. So I left click to increase the letter and I right click to decrease the letter. So I'm just gonna leave it at alpha for now and this will automatically cycle through every time it updates. So it'll automatically jump to Bravo next time and then Charlotte and Delta. So you don't have to touch that once you have it set up how you like. I'm just gonna leave it at alpha and we're gonna leave it at that. Uh, and of course, we can set up as many as we like. So if we wanted to set up one for, let's say, Victoria, because we've got somebody going into Victoria today. Uh, let's see. So let's say 09 and VMC, which looks good. Again, we just check our airport conditions box. And I have nothing here for Victoria. 
and no Tams box. I have nothing here. Let's just create a new one because I will show you guys how to create a new one. So just uh, click new to create a new one and PDC available on request. So you can use abbreviations. There's a, I'll point this out in a second, but there is a full list of abbreviations available on the EATIS website. Uh, I'll link those in the description below as well as obviously the links to install, find the installation for EATIS and everything. But anyway, uh, PDC available on request, hit OK, and that pops that up here. So that's pretty simple. We just check that and it's failed. If we need to edit it, click edit. We can change whatever we want. Obviously delete it with this button. So that's fine. We'll close that. Everything else looks good to me here. Hit connect. And boom, we've got information alpha as well. Current at Victoria. Let's just change it up to Bravo because why not? So we've got information Bravo now at Victoria. Uh, and that is all good to go. Okay, so that covers essentially how to do a quick installation here if you have a profile already available from your FIR or ARTCC. So yeah, that's that's about all for, for now. Uh, stay tuned for part two, and that will cover creating airport profiles, uh, creating other profiles from scratch, things like that. So uh, I will see you guys then. Thank you very much for watching.